Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab. And today we've got an awesome video for you because I will be reviewing the brand new and absolutely awesome Quantum Vector Founders Edition, a special edition for the RTX 3080 Founders Edition graphics card. So this is the water block that we all wanted to see because the initial uh, pictures from EK were looked absolutely stunning. And uh, as you can see, got the card already mounted on my RTX 3080 Founders Edition and uh, it's an absolutely stonking water block, if I do say so. And uh, today what we'll be doing then is looking at how to actually dismantle the RTX 3080 Founders Edition, uh, Founders Edition because it's not an easy card at all to dismantle. I've watercooled probably hundreds of graphics cards in my time and this is by far and away the most difficult graphics card I've ever disassembled. Um, the water block itself is pretty involved as well. Uh, there's loads of stuff um, going in there, a, fairly, um, a pretty hefty backplate and uh, that kind of all encompassing top of the water block as well. So um, moving on from there, what we'll do is showing you how to actually install it. I'll try and do a time lapse or something. So uh, just kind of fast forward through some of the boring bits. And uh, then we'll be looking at how the card actually performs as well. So we've got it uh, set up to Cosmo here, my uh, water cooled test bench and uh, mainly because he's green, green being NVIDIA, right? So uh, yeah, Wanda is taking uh, the back seat just over there at the back of the office at the moment. So Cosmo is dealing with the, uh, the testing today. And um, yeah, so a whole bunch of uh, really cool eye candy uh, for you today, uh, including the thermal testing at the end of the video. So thanks a lot to EK for sending over the Quantum Vector Founders Edition, uh, Special Edition GPU water block and um, don't forget to check out EK Waterblock's website, which you can see a link uh, below, and uh, let's crack on with the testing. To start with though, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to have your support, and don't forget to like this video as well. And uh, also, don't forget to turn on the notifications so you are notified when I actually upload a video. So you will definitely not want to miss the next one that I'm doing because it's lots and lots more cool stuff like this, including mini ITX builds and uh, water cooling features and all that kind of stuff. So don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications and like this video. Okay, so the first step in uh, dealing with the RTX 3080 cooler is actually the most difficult I found. Um, the rest of it's fairly straightforward, just a bit fiddly, but getting these uh, caps off these uh, these four screws here is uh, is very, very tricky because they're magnetic. So um, there are a few ways though that you can get around it. And uh, if you follow my guide here, you'll find uh, hopefully one that works for you. Now, uh, the first step to try is to get a, like a really strong magnet. Um, and uh, what I've just done here is just done like an Amazon thing uh, with a bunch of um, uh, neodymium magnets. And uh, what you do is just either stack them all together or you can buy like a really big one. But the trouble is the cost goes up pretty quickly. So these were actually uh, about 10 or $15, about 10 pounds on Amazon, but they do, they do bigger ones, but they're even more expensive. So, um, I did manage to get one of these caps off. Um, I've just gone around um, and tried again. I think, um, yeah, see, it's not it's not really working on any of those. So I'm guessing that the magnet probably just isn't strong enough. So it's up to you whether you want to try and get a bigger magnet. Um, and uh, if you've got one already at home, obviously that's worth trying. Uh, it needs to be one of the super strong types though, not just uh, your average one that you might get in a toolbox. So that's one option you can do. I have actually got one of the caps out or several of the caps out with this before, but it's not wanting to play ball on camera. So I want to do this as you would find it. So if I'm having problems, you might have problems as well. So um, magnet is a potential option, but we'll go through a few more. So. Anything adhesive, um, as in tape, uh, don't put any adhesive actually onto the cooler because that could damage the coating and it will look horrible. Um, even if you plan on water cooling it for most of your life, which I probably would do. Uh, the first option to try is just normal uh, duct tape, gaffer tape, and uh, just tear off a, uh, a small strip and uh, then just place that onto one of the caps, press it down really, really hard so that adhesive kind of sticks onto it. And um, yeah, there you go, straight off. First time uh, that's pulled one of those caps off. Uh, now again, the magnet failed to get out all of the caps and this method did as well. So if, if you find one of them is still stuck fast, there are two other options for you. So I'll just uh, put that one back in because they're incredibly easy to lose. Um, so the next step to try, which is uh, not particularly invasive is to try uh, like 3M mounting tape. This is actually Gorilla mounting tape. Um, so pretty much the same product, but just a, a slightly different brand. 
Um, and uh, this stuff is super, super strong. So it's not gonna uh, stick to it and take the paint off, but um, if you do like a side panel window um, on your case, like a, one of those type of mods, you will probably find that uh, this is all you need to actually mount it. It's incredibly strong. So all you need here is just to cut out a little square enough to just sit on top of that, that cap. Put this onto the cap. Try not to get your fingers mashed all over it like I've just done because it will lessen the, uh, the, the uh, strength of the adhesive. It should be okay though. And what you should find, you might not even need to just lift the protective layer off the, off the top there. And uh, I'm just gonna use like a small screwdriver. Well, actually, no, do it professionally. Just use my little plastic pick to save um, picking, uh, to scratching the, uh, the surface. And um, there you go. That's just lifted straight out of there with that adhesive on top. So that's, that's probably my preferred option. The gaffer tape can be a bit hit or miss, uh, but the mounting tape, um, or the, uh, the, the mounting tape or the uh, three, uh, like Gorilla mounting tape or 3M mounting tape, that works really, really well. So uh, this is just like a few dollars off Amazon and you only need a tiny bit and you can keep the rest uh, for uh, another day when you're doing some DIY or, or something else. And um, yeah, so that's the stuff that I would recommend. Now, um, if all else fails and they're still not coming out, because I did have a really, really stubborn uh, cap uh, in uh, on my RTX 3080 Founders Edition. And my last resort, I wouldn't recommend that you do this straight off, but my last resort is to actually use a, a scalpel, a scalpel blade to actually get in between the um, the top, the, the cap and the casing and just gently lift it out. So what you wanna do is just aim for a bit that you can um, kind of get the scalpel blade into and um, then just lift up the, uh, the cap and um, obviously you've got to be very, very careful that the blade doesn't slip because it will um, almost immediately scratch the casing of the, uh, of the graphics cards. So what I'll do here is just um, put the scalpel into the edge of that, uh, that keycap, or not keycap, just screw cap. And then as you can see, just gently lift it up and grab it before it clips back down into the cooler. So there we go. That's basically how I removed all those keycaps. The rest of it, I will just uh, flow through uh, and a time lapse on the installation because the rest of it is just dealing with a whole bunch of screws and thermal paste and thermal pads and all that kind of stuff. But as long as you can get past this bit, then uh, it's pretty much plain sailing. So let's take a look.
So the performance numbers then, and we have a peak GPU temperature of 50 degrees C with the card being water-cooled, which is a 24 degrees C drop over the air-cooled card at 74 degrees C. However, this didn't seem to improve the stock speed uh, boost frequency, which remained at 2070 megahertz, but this may improve overclocking headroom. So I'm sure you can all agree that despite its high price tag, the EK Quantum Vector FE RTX 3080 Special Edition is an absolutely fantastic water block. And due to its small size, the Founders Edition and this water block will probably fit in very, very small cases too. So I would like to thank EK Water Blocks for sending me the sample, NVIDIA, the uh, RTX 3080 Founders Edition as well. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you soon.